Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guides channel. I'm sure that you've seen the title of the video and today we're going to be tackling some of the media biases that seems to be coming out of the BBC and Sky News at this moment in time or basically most of the mainstream media at the minute to be fair and actually have a look and see blatant hypocrisies and blatant lies. First of all, we're going to start off with the Dominic Cummins situation. I'm not going to delve into what my feelings are about the situation, but how the media has actually treated Dominic Cummins and has neglected to actually point out anybody else that has gone through. I'll only be using one other person. There are loads of other people that can be put in conjunction or contrast to Dominic Cummins, but I'm going to use Jeremy Corbyn because... Nothing seems to rile up people that when you point out that their beloved Father Christmas is actually doing exactly the same thing as what Dominic Cummins has done. Well, maybe not exactly, but broken or breached the rules of the lockdown. But we'll get into that very shortly. We'll also be moving on to the fact of blatant media lying in part two, which is to point out the fact of... Boris Johnson says that he wouldn't like the two civil servants, as in the medical and science advisors, to get involved in politics, to then say that he's going to let them answer a question, for the media then to say that he told them not to answer a question. Yeah, we're actually going to get into that and see the blatant hypocrisy in that one. But right now, let's get started, right at the beginning of the video. Let's go, shall we? So let's start off with the 26th of May, shall we? This is before anybody has actually proven or disproven, whatever way you want to look at it, with Donald Cummins may or may not have broken any rules. Nobody actually knew for certain. All of this was all down to speculation of either side, of either way, of either opinion. So nobody generally actually knew. So let's go to BBC Newsnight for their impartial view and take on giving us the news, shall we? Good evening. Dominic Cummings broke the rules. The country can see that, and it's shocked the government cannot. The longer ministers and prime minister tell us he worked within them, the more angry the response to this scandal is likely to be. He was the man, remember, who always got the public mood, who tagged the lazy label of elite on those who disagreed. He should understand that public mood now, one of fury, contempt and anguish. He made those who struggle to keep to the rules feel like fools and has allowed many more to assume they can now flout them. So, as you can see, she decides that she's going to go and lambast Dominic Cummins for some particular reason because somehow she has the facts that he did break the laws, apparently he did break the rules, and everybody completely and utterly hates him because of it, and so on and so forth. Remember, this is supposed to be an impartial newscaster, news presenter, that is now giving you not supposedly her opinion, but basis in fact, as she is a news reporter. Funny enough, the very next day, you get to see from so many different news outlets and newspapers in general of apparently Dominic Cummins has been cleared by police of saying that he did not break any rules or regulations especially to do with the 260 mile trip but might might have broken the rules when he went on that 60 mile round trip to the castle now remember this is a might have broken the rules, not a definitive he did break the rules. Notice again the word rules, not law. But according to the newscaster that we just watched and listened to, she was adamant that he definitely broke the law. He definitely broke the rules, right? Interesting that this impartial newscaster, news presenter, has explicitly told us that he has broken the rules and did break the rules. 
interesting that the media is now taking an active or activist role and part in deciding Donna McCummins' outcomes, isn't it? So you would be right in thinking that there would actually be some outcry or some backlash to this activist role that this newscaster, news presenter, would actually occur, wouldn't you? Well, luckily enough, the BBC decided to release this statement. Now, with this statement, it basically is admitting that the newscaster, news presenter herself, broke these impartiality rules that had been set by Ofcom to make sure that news reporters and presenters don't throw in their two cents or their opinions when reporting the news, and if they do, there should be actions taken against them. Well, as far as I'm aware, the only action that's actually been taken is that they have given her a day off. Now, believe it or not, I'm not actually trying to call for any actions that actually occur or happen to this newscaster or news presenter. I'm just trying to say that if you're calling out people for breaking rules and regulations and so on and so forth, and trying to say that they should face some sort of recompense, then shouldn't the people that are actually trying to hold those types of people account also be held to a higher standard then, if they are also breaking the rules and regulations in which they are supposed to adhere to? They keep on trying to claim that it's one rule for thee and one rule for me, are they not in this instance, especially using this news presenter as an actual catalyst as for an example, are they not actually perpetuating their own points of view and breaking their own rules and regulations while trying to call out somebody they perceive to have broken the rules themselves and asking for recompense that occur to them? It seems like it's a tough thing to follow, isn't it? Sticking to a principle and following it. But that seems to be an actual reoccurrence, because even when they were trying to suggest with this newscaster and our other outlets as well, claiming that he did break rules and did breach conditions and so on and so forth, the media themselves, while stalking him outside of his house, travelling miles to be able to get to his own parents' house as well, to be able to get interviews and whatnot, we're also breaking all of the social distancing and travelling rules regardless as well. It's almost like the media themselves were trying to chase a story for a particular reason while actually doing what they said others shouldn't do. Now, I'm going to give you an example of all of this as well. I'm not just going to state my opinion on this matter. I'm going to now show you the media breaking their social distancing rule while pursuing Dominic Cummings for, apparently in their opinion, breaking rules and regulations on social distancing and the lockdown in itself. So let's have a look, shall we? I'm sure you can see that this is actually from the day that the news story broke and everybody was wanting to get to him while trying to say that he was breaking the rules. Now, can you all remind me, please, what is supposed to be the distance that everybody, even essential workers, are supposed to keep from each other while they are working, even if classified as essential workers if they can? Yeah. Does it look like they're keeping to that apparent social distancing rules while trying to destroy the person that they're after at the minute? I wonder. The absolute cheek of the lady there asking that question. Can I ask you a question while keeping my distance? Keeping your distance from who? Him? Yourself? The rest of the people in the goddamn street? Who are you keeping your distance from while you are lying to the people that you are actually reporting to? Because you are literally breaking the apparent rules that you are trying to pin on Dominic Cummings. Now, I believe there's a word for that. I believe it's called hypocrisy. 
Now, love Dominic Cummins or hate Dominic Cummins, at this particular precise moment in time, he is literally guarded on both sides of himself. He is literally penned in. In this point in time, he's supposed to be socially distancing from each other, so on and so forth, trying to uphold the rules and whatnot, while the media is trying to pen him in for breaking the rules, and yet they are literally doing everything that they say he's done by breaking the rules. So, I showed that video to make you aware that the people that are trying to claim that it is immoral, it's hard, and people should resign from actually breaking these social distancing rules and quotas and regulations and so on and so forth, are inherently, by definition, breaking the social distancing rules and regulations themselves while trying to chase somebody that is apparently breaking it themselves. Now, again, I know this is reiteration of what has already been said, but this is pure hypocrisy. This cannot be explained in any other way than pure hypocrisy. Now, going on to a next point, which is literally that if this was anybody else besides Donovan Cummins, the media will just say well, it doesn't really matter. There has been a couple of Labour MPs that have been at the forefront of this, that anybody else that has done videos on this can give you evidence and citations for this. One of the Labour MPs went to a funeral with over a hundred people, but according to the media, and according to Labour, and according to anybody else, that's absolutely fine and is completely understandable. But apparently doing something else because it's Dominic Cummins is apparently not acceptable and somehow other people that are actually breaking the rules while reporting on this isn't hypocrisy and shouldn't also resign as well. But moving on to Father Christmas, moving on to Jeremy Corbyn. And yes, for people that want to know, I don't actually want Jeremy Corbyn to resign from this either. I don't want him sacked because of this particular point either. But even when Jeremy Corbyn has admitted that he has seen his sons, which are from different households, and are actually talking to each other in two, two metres social distancing, breaking, breaking rules and regulations of having people come over, going out and meeting people when they're not supposed to, in his own words, is apparently not good enough for the media to call for his resignation. Now again, I want to reiterate, me myself, I don't want him to resign because of this. It'd be hypocritical of me to actually state that. But if the media are chasing Dominic Cummins for his resignation for apparent breach of rules, then why are they not doing it for Father Christmas? Good old Jeremy Corbyn. Ask yourself that. And I mean that in an honest-to-God aspect. Ask yourself, why are they not chasing after left-leaning people that we have evidence for that have breached apparent rules and regulations provided from the government? Why are they not after these people? That's one aspect of hypocrisy that we should really get onto. But let's move to the second part of the video, where the media are blatantly lying about aspects of Boris Johnson and his press conferences that we all have evidence to. Let's move on to that, shall we? So, let's have a look at now absolutely lying, or should we say misleading, or not telling the whole truth about a situation. We have, at this minute in time, the opportunity to understand that the media themselves, specifically Sky News on this occasion, where they state categorically as their title, Coronavirus, Boris Johnson stops Chris Whitty and Patrick Valance answering questions on Dominic Cummins. Subheading, the PM interposes 
himself as journalists ask the government's medical experts their view on the row on number 10's top aid. Interesting, isn't it, that they've got that all there, all there. Now me and you, we've obviously watched the actual briefing itself because we want to know what's going on and the numbers and what's going on with the actual lockdown itself. But for the people that didn't watch the lockdown, let's actually show the situation that actually happened. The question that was being asked and how everything transpired. Then let's have a look at how the media has tried to portray it. Shall we? Let me go to Sam Coates of Sky News, please. Um, first, a question to Patrick Vanlitz and Chris Whitty. Are you entirely comfortable with the Prime Minister telling you that you can't answer questions about Dominic Cummings? And if you can't give a verbal answer, a nod or a shake of the head will suffice. And is there anything else the Prime Minister has told you not to answer on? And Prime Minister, today the launch of Track and uh, Trace could mean that at any point you might get a call from someone on behalf of the government telling you to quarantine for 14 days. Can you tell the nation, is this a no ifs, no buts instruction that you must follow whatever your childcare arrangements, however important you think your job is? It's, it's very important. Interesting. So, the whole title is that Boris Johnson stopped both his advisers from talking about the Donald Cummins situation, so on and so forth. He interposed himself, remember? He stepped in and subverted them away so they couldn't answer the question. Remember, that's the whole title. That's everything that's apparently happened. That's the whole headline, right? The whole news story. So let's see how Boris Johnson himself stopped these people from being able to talk and live in this dystopian country, shall we? Well, let me... I, I, do you want to answer the first question by any... any the, the, by semaphore or otherwise? Or, I, I can assure you that the desire not to... Wait. Wait. Did... Did Boris Johnson actually willingly and openly pass the question over to his two colleagues that are standing side by side? Wait, so how did he interpose himself on them not to answer the question if he's allowing them to answer the question? That's just embarrassing and a lie. Get pulled into politics is far stronger on the part of Sir Patrick and me than it is in the, in the Prime Minister. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. I'm sorry. I've okay. got nothing to add. I mean, I'm a civil servant. I'm politically neutral. I don't want to get involved in politics at all. Good. Uh, well, I, unfortunately, I, I have no choice. Uh, but so, did anybody else notice how Boris Johnson kept them on such a tight leash and interposed himself to tell them that they weren't allowed to answer questions or to forcibly stop them answering questions? Or did you see him like I did and... Probably most of the people that actually watched the news conference see him actually pass the question openly and willingly to his medical and science advisor only for them to say, yeah, we don't actually want to be a part of politics, which is the reason why we're not answering the question on politics. But let's see how... The BBC themselves decided to take this story and how they put their spin on it themselves, shall we? Let's see how the media transpire what you've just seen, what I've just seen, and how they've interpreted it, shall we? Interesting to see the Prime Minister's response to the questions on the actions of his chief advisor, Dominic Cummings, taking the extraordinary move of stepping in and stopping the chief scientific advisor and the chief medical officer from answering questions on that. He was arguing that he was protecting them from getting embroiled in a political controversy, but I suspect others might argue uh, that in doing that, the Prime Minister was perhaps restricting their independence. So the Prime Minister stepped in. He apparently stopped them from talking, apparently in a way to be able to say that he was protecting them in some way to stop them getting embroiled 
in political controversy. Um, I mean, when did News Anchors reporters actually start making up blatant lies from what we've actually just seen from the evidence and are able to get away with it? Now, many, many moons ago i did a video with a petition to try and get the bbc to take away its license fee now the more and more that the news media themselves tend to seem to push narratives and stories in the direction in which they want it to go rather than being impartial and not reporting factually on what actually happened I think that it's probably a good idea to do something very, very similar to this again. Because when they are being this biased, and when they are making up lies, when is it an actual point of them being an impartial news operator, and them now being an activist that's against the government? Now, before people start jumping on me, I am not against news media outlets holding the government to account. I think they should do, and I think any democratic country should have this. But when, as you've just seen in this evidence of video, when one, they only go after one aspect of people from political ideologies, i.e. Mr. Cummins, but they don't go after other Labour MPs or left-leaning MPs like Jeremy Corbyn and so on and so forth, that's hypocrisy in my mind and is a form of activism to show one side of a political ideology in a bad light while trying to justify or minimize the effect of the other. That is pure and simple activism. Then we get on to the actual point of blatant lying. Forget the hypocrisy, maybe or maybe not you could overlook it, especially when you have implicit biases anyway. Let's be honest, humans have biases. Sometimes it's hard to hide them. I understand that. Maybe you could bypass that and say, yeah, fair enough, that doesn't always happen, so let's carry on. What about blatantly lying about what the Prime Minister actually said, what he actually did, and then having other political activists joining in saying that's exactly what he said and what he done, when me and you and anybody that actually watched a goddamn press conference can blatantly see that that's not what happened by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know where to go from here when the news media themselves are so against people politically that they will make up stories, situations, justifications just to go after people individually to discredit the entirety of an ideology, i.e. the Conservatives as a party. I find that horrendous and is not a democratic lead to free press. That in itself takes away any form of impartiality and turns the BBC, which is funded by the taxpayer and is supposed to, by Ofcom, be impartial to prove that it's not and is now turning into a political activist against the Conservatives. Now again, this is not to say that the Conservatives don't deserve criticism, they do, but not when you're actually making up stories and situations about it. Now, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please do not forget to like and share. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate everything that you do. Thank you very much. I will speak to you all again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.